Hello Penguin Orts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Endurance. A little bit of a shorter episode today, we'll be beginning our construction of our off-world manufacturing colony in the next episode, but before then, Odyssey and Reclaimer are arriving back at Solitude after some pretty extensive deep space missions. So we're joining Odyssey here first, this of course is the spacecraft that headed to the wasteland, the uh, fallen homeworld of Kerbal Kind and explored the ruined Kerbal Space Center. I have sort of decided that we are going to head back to the wasteland, but it's not going to be in this series, it'll be in the next series, um, because we haven't got a transfer window for, I believe, another year and a half or so, so we've got a fair few other projects we're going to be completing before we get around to sending another spacecraft out to our original homeworld. There will be a much larger mission, probably with a large aircraft of some kind, so we can explore all the different biomes, maybe even create some kind of roving base so we can explore the uh, old Kerbal Space Center and stay there for an extended period of time on the surface doing science. I don't know, I'll have a little think about that in future episodes. So Odyssey has been in space for about three years, I believe. We're at about year eight and a half right now in game time. <laughs> it's just quite shocking just how fast our uh, development has been. That seems to always be the case with Kerbal Space Program. You know, you seem to uh, advance through the tech tree in you know, about a decade or so. Although with some of the late game interstellar techs, I think it'll take us about 20 in-game years to actually research all of them. But we've got Odyssey into a uh, relatively low orbit around Solitude. And so now we swap to Thea Station, which is been sitting here doing nothing for a very long time um, with Doning and Hermin Kerman on board. It did just have Doning Kerman on board, he's a scout which means he can last uh, a very long time in space without going crazy, so we just sort of left him on there in case we needed him. Uh, he's long since exceeded his habitation timer but he's got supplies so although he refuses to work uh, we just left him on the station for I think he's been up there maybe four, five years? Uh, <laughs> in space? Probably not particularly healthy. Herman Kerman is just a Kerbal that we rescued relatively recently and just stuck him on the station um, until we were sending up our next crew vehicle and we will be of course taking him home with the rest of our crews in this episode. So what you're seeing here is our little Hesia nuclear shuttle, which we sent up when we created the Thea space station. Because I thought, hey, you know, we're going to have a bunch of low solitude orbit contracts to do. All of our future rescue contracts and everything, we'll do them from here. And then we just sort of stop doing low solitude orbit contracts. Um, it was sort of maybe around episode 15, that sort of time when we were launching space shuttles and we were completing something like you know seven low solitude orbit contracts in a go because we needed money uh, so we just you know managed to combine tons of low paying contracts into single missions to make them um, profitable and just because I wanted an excuse to launch space shuttles and it was pretty good fun uh, but then we started to have a bit more of a focus on deep space exploration and advancing uh, in that way and you guys were getting a little bit bored of seeing too much of solitude uh, so we sort of phased it out so fear has just been a bit of a pointless space station. We did most of our research and development back on uh, Talos 1 and Talos 2. But you'll see there we've transferred all the scientific experiments out of Odyssey, we closed the docking hatch and we've deactivated all the lights, life support recyclers and habitation modules on board. I don't know whether we're going to use Odyssey again to be honest. I mean it's a previous generation interplanetary spacecraft, our future ones are going to have more powerful engines, uh, they're going to be more sophisticated, possibly even use cryonic freezing chambers um, in order to keep our Kerbals, you know, not starving to death, try and keep the weight of the spacecraft down until they reach their destinations. Some of you have been saying, oh, you know, that'll limit the size of them, and yeah, I want to see big, awesome motherships and stuff. Trust me, with the sort of missions that I've got planned to uh, duel you know, Reaper and uh, the Wasteland, <laughs> for the next few uh, episodes slash next series. Trust me, those are going to be some pretty massive motherships going to those worlds. Um, yeah, I think if we didn't have the cryonic freezing chambers to try and keep our part count and size count down, uh, yeah, I might be running a, you know single figures when it comes to frame rate. But anyway, we've transferred our crew back to Thea now. So they're just going to wait on the station for about 30 days or so until Reclaimer arrives. So... Before Reclaimer actually uh, gets into Solitude's Sphere of Influence, what we're doing is we're just burning to lower our periapsis just inside the atmosphere and then ditching this central fuel tank. Since Reclaimer had to go a little bit further to demise, uh, right to the inner solar system, it's used a bit more of its uh, main fuel tank there. So we've emptied it, so what we're going to do is just leave that on a course to smash into the atmosphere and burn up. Uh, because it's just dead weight that we're lugging around now. And then we're just going to essentially half the length of the spacecraft. 
And this was actually the original uh, size of the spacecraft, you know, when we miscalculated our Delta V and we got stranded around demise. Uh, good times, right? Yeah, probably not. This crew has been in space, I think, maybe four, four and a half, possibly even five years they've been in deep space. So, yeah, I think it's it's long overdue that we brought these guys home. Poor Ted. Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll be giving them, uh, I think, only about a month of respite. No, it'll be about two months, two, three months of respite before we send them out on their next mission, which will be our big jewel mission, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about in probably the next few episodes, because uh, I still have a fair bit of backlog to get through <laughs> when it comes to recording. In the semester break, um, you know, between semester one and semester two of uni, I did record a lot of endurance, and then I just sort of, now I'm in semester two, it's just when I can find the time to edit it all together and do the post-commentary. Well, I say find the time, it's, it's mainly just find the, uh, <laughs> the willpower. Not that I don't enjoy doing it, but uh, yeah, it's just... Oh, it seems that you catch up on one module at uni, right? You get slightly behind, you catch up, and then you blink, and suddenly you're behind on three other modules. Like, I know I'm doing a rocket science degree, but oh, it can get a little bit overwhelming at times, I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, yeah, YouTube does fall to the bottom of the list of priorities, but endurance is a nice little thing to uh, take my mind off of the uh, <laughs> crushing weight of all of my coursework. I've got to write a uh, technical essay soon, although I have got a pretty cool essay title uh, I've been given, which is the uh, future commercialization of space. So that should be pretty interesting and maybe, well, after I've done my research I can talk about that in uh, some of the future episodes I make. Anyway, so Reclaimer isn't just going to be heading into a low orbit, mainly because I was getting lazy and I couldn't be bothered to rendezvous our Hessia nuclear shuttle with it again. We're just rendezvousing Reclaimer straight with Thea. So, obviously I didn't do this with Odyssey as well, otherwise the part count of having both spacecraft docked in one place would seriously impact the frame rate. But uh, Reclaimer is a smaller spacecraft, um, and so I thought I'd just save myself a bit of time and just travel straight there. So, we're going to be docking Reclaimer straight onto Thea Station and then leaving it all in orbit. We might reuse certain parts of these spacecraft because you know they still have perfectly functional propulsion modules which are mostly still full of fuel. Odyssey still has a massive fuel module um, so it's just a bunch of fuel sitting in orbit so maybe we'll repurpose certain parts of the spacecraft but we certainly won't be reusing the habitation modules you know with the science labs because we've unlocked interstellar science labs which are better than the stock ones so we can you know research things faster store a bit more data uh, and even generate data from their surroundings that are just much better so we've got next generation science labs next generation propulsion systems really yeah i don't know if we have much use for these but i'm not going to deorbit them because they still contain fuel they could still be helpful and save us a bit of money in the future so you know they're not causing us any problems kessler syndrome probably won't be an issue, although <laughs> doing these uh, rendezvous and stuff, more than once, debris from previous missions and stuff did pass within about 30 kilometers. I have been a little bit irresponsible in this series about leaving sort of second, third stages in highly eccentric orbits um, <laughs> with a pretty low periapses, so uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe leaving giant derelict spacecraft in low orbit isn't such a great idea, but I guess we'll find out the hard way, won't we? So this is uh, Ted just getting out here, just transferring our scientific experiments out. Uh, so we, of course, have still got some copies of experiments so that we could research them in the labs. We didn't manage to research all of our copies um, during our journeys home. But I think what we'll do is maybe when we build our uh, nemesis colony, we'll put a science lab on it. Maybe, you know, launch a science module at a later date. And then we'll get all the data that we still have here on Thea, all the copies of data which aren't actually worth anything. Uh, science wise but we can still research in labs and then we'll just stick it into a, a science lab on Nemesis and, you know, it'll give it a bunch of data to research and we should get a fair bit of um, science per day considering it'll be on the surface of Nemesis that's just an idea for the future so now they're all sitting on Fear Station we're launching this, the Harpy 3. We sort of named all of our crew transfer vehicles Harpy. Um, and this one is a modern one using that uh, same engine there. I've forgotten the name of it, but it's, it's very similar to the Merlin engine used by SpaceX. It's very, very cheap. It's got a very good thrust to weight ratio, but it needs to use cryogenic fuels. Uh, but it is so cheap that it basically makes it so it's not really cost effective to land it. We're not using nine of them. We're using a single one. So, yeah, it's it's 
pretty much pointless to uh, try and land it and recover it. We barely get anything back, so it's not really worth the time and effort. Uh, so that's what I, I kind of use that launch vehicle for. It's just launching very small payloads into low solitude orbit um, where we don't really need to worry about reusing the booster because it only costs a few thousand to actually, uh, actually produce the damn thing. So you see here, just rendezvousing ourselves with Fear Station, heading ourselves in and uh, going in for that rendezvous. This is pretty much all we're doing in this episode, is just bringing our crew back. But uh, yeah, we've got, they've been in space for a really long time. We have a bunch of contracts as well that we've had for the entire time they've been on these missions. And that's stopping us actually getting new contracts for new celestial bodies. And we really just need to finish these and bring, as I said, this first phase of uh, manned interplanetary exploration to a close and then we'll start building our next generation um, exploration vehicles in future episodes. I'm really looking forward to building the dual mothership. What I'm essentially going to do with the dual mission is we are going to drop atmospheric probes onto Reaper slash dual, you know, because it does actually have a surface now. But uh, the main mission, we're going to have a big cargo SSTO, and that's going to be landing on Arados and Valiant, so Lave and the newly melted Val. Um, and we're going to deploy a sort of submarine. I think I might install some buoyancy parts, uh, maybe out of the maritime mod, and make my own submarine, since the USI submarine mod uh, isn't working in this version 1.3. And I think I'm going to explore the oceans of Aridos and Valley. I think that could be really cool. So store a sort of hybrid. It could be maybe a rover with folding re folding wheels and it could turn into a submarine. I'll put that inside the SSTO. Uh, and we land on the surface, explore the oceans of those two moons. That could be really cool. Um, I don't know whether I'll include some kind of refueling shuttle so I can land on maybe Valm, which is Pol. Uh, the new name for it, maybe land on that and extract some ore and refuel the spacecraft there. That would certainly keep the weight and part count down. Uh, and I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not one of those channels that tries to do everything without any refueling to make it as impressive as possible. This is a uh, career mode, we're just trying to keep things as cost effective as possible. Although, once we get the uh, Nemesis colony up and running, funds aren't going to be such a problem, but still, you know. I think that might be a pretty cool idea. Have a refueling craft included. Uh, that could be interesting. We're also, of course, going to have to have a pretty big lander to land on Tylos, which is the new name for Tylo. Uh, Tylo's gravity is even stronger. I think it's 0.85 since Bop crashed into it and added a bit more mass to it. That is still lower than Demise. But uh, our demise lander, the monument lander, yeah, it, it didn't really leave much margin for error. And we very nearly got stranded on the surface of demise. Um, it required many, many attempts to get that descent profile down. So, yeah, we're going to need a pretty radically redesigned <laughs> lander uh, for landing on Tillos. And trying to keep the mass of it as low as possible as well, while also keeping the thrust to weight ratio and the delta V um, high enough so we can actually land on it. And that should be an interesting challenge. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a hefty mothership. Um, I think we'll probably include multiple science labs on that so we can get the most science uh, possible out of that mission. Maybe two or three science labs. Include a bunch of scientists. Uh, make it a really big mission with possibly an artificial gravity ring as well. That could be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, we're not really going to have space for a huge amount of habitation modules to support all the different Kerbals. Hence why I'm thinking we'll use some cryonics to uh, freeze them for the journey. Journey. But we've landed our harpy and we end up with 8,645 science from the two different missions. Of course, that's not entirely accurate because we've got a bunch of science from them, um, from all the various experiments that we research in their science labs and then transmit it back. We will have got thousands of units of science just from that alone. So I'm so glad that uh, those of you who told me Really definitely take a mobile processing lab. I'm very glad that I did actually do that in the end because we got a lot of science out of it. Um, and we also got ourselves around about 2 million funds from completed contracts alone. So that's not even taking into account all the world firsts that we got. So yeah, pretty damn profitable missions. Um, even if they were very, very extended, they've sort of been running in the background for about half the series or so, so uh, it's it's almost sad to see this era sort of end, but uh, in the next episode we'll be beginning on our nemesis colony and then we'll be beginning to build our next generation interplanetary spacecraft. Thank you very much for watching everyone, I've been the Beardy Penguin and I will see you all next time.